in a land where Hinduism and Buddhism can be traced back to the beginning of human history. The cultures, beliefs and practices of the two religions are profoundly intertwined. Local belief has long been influencing the social structure and the political system of the nation. Despite the Western influence, which brought democracy and a new set of cultures, one thing that remains unwavering in the community and the whole nation, against all the trends, is Kumari, or the Living Goddess. A five-year-old girl is carried out of her room by her father. The chair represents a little throne, with the red flowers decorating the top representing a crown. Her feet cannot touch the floor at any cost. She is Kumari, or the little goddess of the Nepalese. Kumari means princess in Sanskrit and purity in Nepalese. A Kumari is therefore considered a pure little goddess, who Buddhists and Hindus in Nepal believe is the representation of God. A Kumari is revered by the public, including monarchs. The practice can be dated back to the 6th century. Unlike other gods with which we're familiar, Kumari is a living goddess. Even at the age of five, once she is proclaimed Kumari, she is considered to be above all others, including her parents. Therefore, it is not just her life that has changed, but all her family members have to treat her differently as well. With a strong faith as a Buddhist family, all of the members are willing to adapt. Every morning, as per the ritual, her grandfather lights the incense, rings the bell, prays and draws the auspicious mark on the forehead of the little girl, who sits emotionless. Boiled eggs are her usual breakfast. She's dressed up in red, which is the color Hindus believe to be associated with God and power. On days when people come to pray and ask for blessings, she's adorned with ornaments, including bulky necklaces and silver bracelets. The symbol on the forehead is believed to be the third eye, the eye of strength and power. She's been proclaimed Kumari for less than a year. She was selected because she most fits the required characteristics. A Kumari has to be a pre-pubescent girl, which represents the age of innocence. The status of a Kumari ends with her first menstrual cycle. Thus, temples in Nepal conduct a search for their new Kumari every 10 to 13 years. Only one girl is selected to be a Kumari per district. The search is earnest and exquisite. Girls are examined for their physique, appearance, behavior, religion and background, including her horoscope. She has to be born to a Buddhist family that descends from the Shakya caste, the same caste as the Lord Buddha or Nawari's Bajacharya family, which is a local tribe who've been dwelling in the Kathmandu Valley for hundreds of years. The girls must possess the 32 perfections of a goddess. Among them are a chest like a lion, eyelashes like a cow, and a body like a banyan tree. These characteristics are examined by Buddhist and Hindu priests in a ceremony internally held, with no admission by outsiders allowed. One of the priests, who has been part of the selection process for many years, explained that even parents are not allowed to witness the process. It is up to the priests to find the perfect girl. <laughs> ठुलो भएपछि 
भाई मतलब रजस्वला होने भाग अगाड़ी नहीं अगाड़ी नहीं कुमारी फेर्न पर्ने हो बिहार मैं अगि बने दस रठ बिहार जो शाक्य वंश का कन्या इस में उपयुक्त कन्या छानी अब कन्या छांदा खेल तब को कन्या को कुछ खोट नुक राम होना unless during an annual festival when she'll be carried out of her place so that the public can pay their respects and ask for blessings based on our observation she is visibly more mature than many girls of her age her duty even at the age of 5 is to welcome devotees in a mature manner and make auspicious marks as blessings चाहे मेरे प्रत्येक महीना चाहे राम जाओस् राम बिताओस् प्रार्थना करना ते हो एक दिन भी खेर नजाओस् मेरे समय यो बाचुंजल समय समय एक दिन भी खेर नजाओस् महीना को एक दिन एक गते म प्रत्येक महीना में आँचु अकोर्डिंग टू द बिलीफ कुमारी ओन्ली हेव थ्री फेसियल एक्सप्रेशन विच आर एंग्री सीरियस एंड स्माइलिंग Some believe that these expressions can predict the future. Today, her face shows no emotion. Kumar le garnu no ni mani tar me Kumari chai ni bahir janu manu hunna main kura tyo bo ani Kumar le chai ni garnu no unni bhane ko aba waha lai chai ah amle gali garnu bhayo na je gare pani hamle chhema matra magera waha le manau parcha. In the past, the Kumari didn't get to study because she was believed to be a goddess living above all humans. Since then, the world has changed. Due to the fact that they have to ultimately go back and live their lives as a human, the rules and traditions that existed for over a hundred years have been bent. Teacher, ne sabhi subject pranse. Three jana teacher aun hunsa, hai na? Math, Nepali, English, Science, sabhi bo. अब मेरे तो अब कुमारी मेरे छोरी मैं देखे चाहिए कुमारी चाहिए बाटो हिड़न ही आने वर्षों वर्षों में स्कूल जान लाइन हमें आर्ट्स मात्र पुराने पर्स मैं देख रहा इस कुमारी है जहाँ जान लाइन डराऊँ अलग कुमारी जो टोल तोरे जो भाने छोरे पे तो मैं देखे अब मेरे मैं भविष्य में के विचार कर अब सब एक सुमारी हो यहाँ एक सुमार तो धेरी बिहार भैया बिहार नई है उन्नीला चाहिए टाइम टाइम में चाहिए बोला चाहिए म यहाँ चाहिए मेरे घर में भेटाऊँ है अभी मेरे छोरी को अली चाहिए कुमारी अरुण रहे मन तो भर चाहिए नदराओस् मैं तो सोचि हेविंग देर डोटर सिलेक्टेड एज अ कुमारी ब्रिंग्स प्राइड टू द फैमिली बिकज बेस्ड ऑन द बिलीफ एंड सोसायटी इन नेपाल द होल फैमिली रिशीव्स रिस्पेक्ट फ्रॉम हर स्टेटस एज वेल Over a period of roughly 10 years, a kumari is treated and worshipped just like a princess. The predetermined rules and regulations make their lives different from other girls. Once nature brings them their first period, however, a whole new world outside of the temple awaits them. In a way, being a Kumari cuts ties with the external world. Not being allowed to go out, to talk to others, to go to school or to play with kids of their own age raises the question of whether this practice is violating their rights. The question came at the same time as a heart-wrenching national transition when the Nepalese dynasty was overthrown in 2005. New political ideologies emerged in Nepal. beliefs and traditional practices were questioned among those are the rights of a kumari a case was filed in court to determine the rights and the lives these girls should have the case came to a conclusion in 2008 when the court ruled that the strict rules of kumari were outdated 
and that the girls should have access to education and other rights, just like any other kids. Despite handing back their rights, the court maintained the godlike status of these girls. This proves the strong ties the Kumari have with Nepalese culture, a culture that deems them valuable and worth preserving for the Nepalese. Politics also retains the belief, even when democracy stepped in as a modern-day system, country leaders still seek blessings from a Kumari. After hundreds of years, Kumari still hold the status of goddess amid their ever-changing importance. What strikes us is that when their godlike status comes to an end, how do these girls adapt and survive in society? This 13-year-old girl with long hair and a beautiful dress is Martina, a former Kumari of a big district in Kathmandu. She was considered the most esteemed Kumari. She was proclaimed a Kumari at the age of three. Today she is finally back with her family after her nine-year duty as a Kumari. Thus she's able to talk directly to us as someone of equal status. Now she's a regular girl, but the traditional beliefs made her the girl from whom presidents and country leaders once asked for blessings. And I'll come in the Kumari house and to, uh, to give a golden coin, yeah. to, to give the Kumari and to give a blessing at mm. Unlike Nihara, the first Kumari we met, Martina wasn't living with her family when she was a Kumari. During her time, however, the regulations had already been adjusted. While living in the temple, she got to study and learn about technology just like any other kids. Though the rules have been loosened, the outside world is definitely bigger than the one in which they lived as a Kumari. The school will be her first new world experience after stepping out of the house this time. She stands in line, blending in with other students before going to classes with her classmates. In this world, she is, for the first time, able to make friends who can touch her and talk to her as a normal human being. In this world, she can look into other people's eyes and openly express her feelings without any restrictions. The first day at school is a day to remember for every child. It happens at the age of four or five for other youngsters, but for her, it happens ten years later than that. At the school, she feels very shy and hesitated to enter the school premises, but all the, st all the t students, her friends, they already they go often there, that place, Kumarigar, then they are so closed. That's why she is in the same level. She is trying hard. She is improving. Since she hasn't interacted with other people for almost her whole life, it's not unexpected that she is shy and hardly makes eye contact when talking to strangers like us. A year ago, these interactions would not have been possible, since she was still a Kumari, the living goddess of the Nepalese. If a Kumari were an adult full of ego, living a life as a normal person might not be this easy after having been worshipped and given importance for so long. The adolescent in Martina, however, means she naturally seeks liveliness, just like others of her age. Today, she's just a normal girl trying to adjust to this whole new world. Shanira, a 23-year-old girl, is studying her master degree with the dream of becoming an accountant. She is also a former Kumari, who lived in a temple for 10 years. If Martina is in a cocoon getting ready to become a butterfly, Shanira is a fully grown butterfly, ready to fly. From her uneasy experience adapting to her new life and meeting people, 
She now wants to organize training for other Kumari. She introduced us to her friend, who is also a former Kumari. They both want to revolutionize the regulations to make them fit the modern era because both of them experienced hardships on the very first step they took after leaving the temple. Uh, it was very difficult for me as soon as I uh, retired from the Khmeri because first thing is I don't know how to walk because uh, when I was Khmeri uh, people used to carry me when I go to outside so it was very difficult for me to walk and um, I used to feel very uncomfortable in wearing school uniforms. I don't like to wear it. It was blue dress and blue skirts. I was very uncomfortable in that and uh, it was very difficult for me to uh, interact with the friends and mixing up with them in their circles. They both agree that education is not the problem, but socializing is the true obstacle. It took a long time for Nishara to become this eloquent. Uh, yes, because um, at my time, and as I said, education was just introduced and the only thing possible was teaching through the books, not other thing. The, the presentation skills, the languages, the arts, music, whatever I missed inside being as a goddess, I wanted to introduce it for the current Kumari. I don't want her to face the same problem afterwards in her transition period, so we thought of starting a group together to help her. According to belief, if a Kumari falls sick or cries, it's a bad omen for the country. The Nepalese royal massacre in 2001 and the 2015 earthquake have been linked by many Nepalese to the illness of Kumaris, which included Chenira. And I was sitting on the throne and I was, uh, the trails were rolling down, so some other people, they came to see me and uh, one of them was a priest who, who selected me mm -hmm. and he was there and said, he saw me crying and then said that this is a very bad omen for the nation and we need to ask for forgiveness to the goddess. So he was, uh, you know, about to do, perform some rituals, but then at that moment uh, we heard the news that the royal family has been collapsed, so that's why, and then I stopped crying and laughed. I don't know what happened to me, I, I just don't know. Though education and modern society have shaped Shanira into an ordinary girl, another side of her life is still tied to the Kumari beliefs and traditions. She's living with her aunt, who is the oldest Kumari in Nepal. Her aunt retains the status of Kumari, as her first menstrual cycle never came. In the outside world, she is a confident girl who's working hard to be a good accountant. Here inside this house, however, time stands still. She's still taking care of visitors who come to worship and ask for blessings from her aunt. This is the belief that has been with her family for generations. Shanira's life is a reflection of Nepal, a country of parallel worlds. One is the democratic and modern world in which things are constantly evolving. The other is full of beliefs and faith that have been questioned, yet are so intertwined with people's life that they cannot be demolished. Though the world has gone through many eras and science has stood on the opposite side of some beliefs, human nature often clings to hope, which make praying and blessing things with which we cannot cut our ties. Kumari, the little living goddess, the representation of Buddhist and Hindu belief in Nepal, is the reflection of this idea. A Kumari is a little girl who plays an important role and receives honor and respect at a very young age. What they have to give up is the fun, the liveliness and the fundamental rights which has prompted many to question this ancient practice. As long as Kumari are still the symbol of luck and power which leaders and the public long for, there will, however, still be little girls stepping into this position and perpetuating this belief.